What's going on guys? So, as you guys probably remember, I did a video of an unveiling or a reveal of a new project bike. My Lowrider ST. Um, I'll link that down in the description below so you guys can go check that out. It has a full walk around, all that kind of stuff on it, let you know everything that looks like now. But for the moment, I have it set up here on my rack. I'm gonna lift this thing up and we're gonna start our very first upgrade on it. And let me tell you, it's something I'm really, really excited about because the mid controls on this thing just suck. Now, I'm almost six foot, 5'11-ish, right? And on a good day, a little over, but my knees up on this thing are just so way high and it just uh, is very uncomfortable. So first upgrade I wanna do is get these forward controls on there. They've come in and it is the soft tail forward controls kit in black. Now, a couple people have talked about these and they've said there's two versions. There's a chrome version and there's a black version and they're apparently a little bit of a different design. So the chrome version has more of a similar soft tail brake pedal alignment and the black one people say seem to be over to the left a little bit. I don't mind that because I'm gonna change out the air cleaner on it and get rid of the scoop because it sticks out like that far uh, anyway when I take it forward. So we'll see how it goes. And if it turns out to be a problem, then I'll look at different solutions. But along with that, um, I'm going to also put on my new Saddleman seat. It's a Saddleman step up, black with brown um, stitching and the grip in the back right there, very sexy, I like it. And then we have to add in the screw, the nut for the fender, and then while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, my Robert Becker Designs all blacked out seat lock on the back of that thing too. I really love these things, they work really good. So, can't wait to get the forward controls on it. I only have 12 miles on this because it's just not fun to ride. So I'll be glad to get this on there and then I'll do a test ride and do a few shots of before and after and show you what it looks like with the foot positions. And then um, we'll do a test ride and see how much different it feels. I have a bar solution coming. I have a riser solution coming. And so there's gonna be more stuff we're gonna do to this bike, but um, we're gonna get started with this. So I'll get it jacked up, get the camera turned around, and we'll go on the overhead and take a look at the parts that come in the kit. And I'll show you what I'm talking about with the different style brakes, uh, pedals, and then we'll lift the bike up on higher level there, get right a level, and we'll start getting this thing installed. So, all right, see you in a minute. Okay, so now I got the overhead set up. You can kind of see what's going on. So as I mentioned in the initial intro, you got your full destructions, instructions here, destructions, that's probably more close to the case, right? Your full instructions here on, you know, what to do, they cover everything. And, and quite honestly, I'm pretty surprised. They actually are pretty good from what I've looked at. So that's good. The kit comes in a couple boxes, an A box and a B box. And what it basically does is it separates out the brake side versus the shifter side and all the applicable hardware that comes with it, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, you get the O-rings, you know, for the brake lever, and then you get the O-rings for inside of here for the shifter. And I left this in the package because this is the shifter arm because it's got grease on the end of it. The thing I don't like about this is these come in chrome for the shift lever um, and the um, adjuster bar. And that's okay for now because I'm getting different ones. I've ordered the Harley black one and I had to do that on my Heritage too. And then I ordered a new one of these, but for now to get them on so I could use it, that's good. I've also ordered a new um, shifter peg because the black ones with the rubber, you know, they leave marks on your boots and shoes or whatever you're using, stuff like that. But, so it comes with the brake side. This is the pedal that I'm talking about that's kind of a little different design. The chrome one is a little wider and switched around, so we'll see how that looks out. But these basically go in the front where if you look at like a Heritage soft tail or something like that, these would be kind of where the board mounts are. And to be honest, I think I could probably put full boards on there if I got the Heritage board mounts because it's a soft tail frame, but different project at a different time. 
So anyway, so it comes with the brake side, a new clip, retaining pin, some necessary hardware that goes with it, and then it comes with the shift lever side, new black shift lever, which I'll change out at some point, the um, shift linkage here, and then that lever for that point. Comes with a plug for when you remove the mid control, you can plug that hole up, O-rings as well for those different areas, the bolts for the hardware, a couple other bolts for adjustments, and then like I said, the shifter peg, and then I'm adding the uh, seat nut for the back, and just in case you guys wanna know there, I did the, hopefully that's right side up, yeah. I did the drag specialties on this, instead of the Harley dealership one, because I heard that the reviews were better on those. So, and then I also have my Robert Becker Designs all blacked out seat lock. These things are awesome. Absolutely love them. Uh, I also suggest you use some gloves when you're working near those fins, especially around the linkages and stuff. Boy, let me tell you what, those suckers are sharp. And I've cut my knuckles several times on them, so you wanna be sure you do that. We've got our Loctite, of course, because we Loctite everything. You got a T40 bit, T45 bit, 316 bit, one quarter bit, half inch or socket, ratchet, some extensions and converters because I want the bigger thing there. Got half inch wrenches for the bolts and the adjusters. And then I also have a Crescent wrench, which usually isn't something I very commonly use, but oddly enough, when you look at this one that comes with it for the shift linkage, this is a half inch. This is supposed to be 7 16 and it's really tight fit on one of them and the other one doesn't. So, I don't know, I think it's kind of stupid. I think it's just cheap manufactured, but you know, like I said, I'll be changing that out, so that's irrelevant. But I got the Crescent wrench to help hold that when I spin these things down and adjust my links and everything else. But. Other than that, that's everything that comes in the box and what you need and what we're going to be doing. So I will get the bike lifted up on the lift and we will get this stuff all laid out on the rack so that we can start getting ready to go and start assembling. And then uh, we'll get this thing going. So, all right. See you soon. All right, guys. So I got the camera turned around now. Hopefully this is a good view of everywhere. We're going to be working in these areas right here. Uh, all in here, so hopefully it's a good deal to check it out. Now you can't see in the camera, but down here below here, I have all my tools laid out. I have a towel laid across my rack. I have my screws all blue to, uh, Loctited ready to go. One tool that I forgot to mention that I thought was pretty cool, I'm gonna test it out, I, I just got it, is this E-clip removal inserter tool. And uh, I got a little while ago for a different project, but this is what it is right there. And I'll also put the part number in there. I just got it on Amazon. It wasn't that expensive, but um, I figured I'd give it a shot because you know, these E-clips are kind of pain in the butt and they fly all over the place. And we're gonna need to pull one off at the bottom on the back of this here, and then also put it back on. The neat thing about this guy is that um, it's got a, release side and then you pull this out flip it over push that little button in and it's got an insert side so just a little different way of that it goes which i thought was kind of cool um, just one gives you some leverage to push on and the other one gives you some leverage to do different stuff with so we'll see how this little guy works all right so according to the instructions first thing we need to do is take off the standard uh, peg and spring. And you pull out the peg and there's a spring right there. And so you want to pay attention to the orientation of the spring. So there's a little hole right there. And this little guy sticks right in there. So I'm going to leave it sitting there like that, just so that when I go to put it back in, it's a little easier and I don't get it messed up, you know, because you get distracted, right? So we've got that released. 
So then the next thing it says to do after you do that is you go ahead and remove the left mid foot support bracket, which is this guy. These are T45 on the, on the uh, bit. All right, the next thing they call out is you've got these plastic plugs right here that are covering the threaded holes. And this is where I think that, to my comment earlier, that I could probably put full boards on here if I wanted to, um, because these are there, just like on my Heritage. But they talk about this little plug right here, and it's the top one that they want you to remove. So I'm trying to see here how to get this little guy out. Okay, so the next thing we gotta do is there's a screw down inside of here that we've gotta get out that's gonna release uh, this shift lever back here so that we can pull this assembly out. So to make it easier, I'm gonna take off the linkage first. Okay, so now we still have to get back here to this point where there's a screw down in there somewhere. And you can't feel it, but it's in there. There it is. All right. This thing is way down here on the side of this lever and you have to loosen that up so that you can pull the uh, lever out and release this inner shift arm because we're gonna go over here for the forward controls, right? Okay, after some finagling and a little bit of skin, those sharp fenders like I told you, see? Those fins, have your gloves on but you can't feel anything. So this is the trajectory where this bolt is down there that holds that shift lever on. And it is a quarter inch, which surprised me that it was because I did not think it would be that large of a uh, bolt to go in there, but it is. So now that I've already cut my knuckles, I'm going to put my gloves on because I'll be turning a ratchet near this. But just so you can see, that's the trajectory. Now I just used this little plastic pry tool to prop my bar up so it stopped moving on me because it was driving me nuts. All right. A little ratchet on here. Being cautious of the fins. I'm gonna kind of pull towards me. I'm gonna try to back this thing out. There it goes. I'm using my hand as a buffer with the gloves for the fins so I don't drag my wrench or ratchet across the front of the nicely machined fins. Okay. There it is. Fell through. 
thank goodness. So that's the bolt that holds that rear shift lever on, or linkage. So now we've got that loose. Now let's see if this just yep, pulls right out. There's your old shift linkage right there. Now let's see how this guy comes out. And that's what it looks like on there. That pinch bolt goes down right in there, grabs around this piece here through the block, and that gives you your shift linkage, right? So now, because we have that out, we've got this cool, big, sexy chrome spot and hole in the case. And that's what they give you these little blockers for, right? So I'm just take that in there right now. And get that little guy in there without trying to mess the prongs up. Like that. And now your mid controls are covered the hole, right? All right, the next thing it wants us to do is do a pre-assemble of the left side kit components. So what does that mean? That means insert the short leg of the torsion spring into the hole in the foot peg, insert the long leg of the torsion spring into the hole of the left foot support bracket. So I'm guessing they're gonna want us to put this in here which is right there, right? For the um, for the new mount. Now, I'm gonna skip this part. Okay, since I'm skipping that, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing ready to go. So you got these two O-rings right here that comes in the kit. You're gonna put one in there and then we're gonna get this greasy chrome inner shift lever. We'll slide in here and push up against that O-ring, I'm guessing. Yep. So it's gonna sit like that, right? O-ring in here, and then there's gonna be an O-ring in here. So we're gonna get that one ready to go. And then with the shift lever, Again, probably don't need to put that on right now just because I, I don't want a lot of room things in my way as I'm trying to bolt this on. So I'm gonna vary from the instructions a little bit. Now that at least I've got this part in, so I don't have to worry about that being a problem going behind. Everything else is on the front, right? So I'm just gonna lay that, lay that like that and we're gonna bolt up this uh, mount. Okay, so now that I have that kind of set in place there, it's built in from the back, it's not gonna go anywhere, it's just got a seat down in there when it ties in. I'm gonna go now and put on this bracket. So I'm gonna take the supplied bolt, T45, lined up and ready to go, and just start getting that in there. Okay, looks like that started. Just get that one bottomed out tight, lightly until I get this one going in so I can make sure everything lines up nice, not pinching anything. You know, you got your clutch cable there, all that. Make sure you don't have any of that bound in there. All right, so both of those are in there good. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the Magilla Gorilla and put those boys down. They got Loctite on them, so that'll help it stay and your bracket is mounted all right so that's good now i have to clean that thing off because it's driving me nuts now we can look at getting um, the shift linkage in right so where this goes is you have the second o-ring this goes down there and sits like that. And they give you 
a little plastic spacer. So this guy goes there and helps hold that O-ring in place. And then your shift lever. And right now it's gonna be just a guess. We're just gonna stick that right there. And that spacer helps push it and keep this nice and flat, right? And then the pinch bolt is threaded on, threaded on this side. So it's gonna go in the back on that side. So it's this half inch bolt. So we're just gonna stick that in there so I know that's where it goes. And it helps hold that in place, right? So now you can see the shape of your, your shifter here. So once we get it, the, the linkage adjusted or linkage put on here, then we can tell where this is gonna lay, right? And then we can get the peg on, and then when, at that point we can take this off and on and adjust it for uh, height, right? All right, so now I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go take this rag out, because I got that out, put my gloves back on. And we're gonna use, again, our handy dandy 3 16 T-handle. And we're gonna put this linkage on this other guy. And if you remember when the other one came off, you know, they got these little floating heads in there, right? And so you just get it on there and, and there. Okay, I just spun out my linkage ends a little bit. I don't know what I'm gonna need, so I'm just doing that for now. And then uh, that, lets, that allows me to just have one side off and put one side in more or less if I want to bounce out because I like these to be center balanced when I put them on. So call me crazy, but that's what I like to do. I'm just having to hold it in place so I can get the foot peg on and that will give me a better idea of where I want to adjust it, right? So now for the foot peg. If you remember, you've got this clevis pin that goes down inside of there and you've got this point here that goes inside of there which matches, right? So. get one definitely get one all right so that's that and then of course we have the peg the new one they provided this has already got some loctite on it so this is just going to go right there and thread in to get that on Okay, uh, yes, everything's loose right now, but essentially that's the install, forward control. I'm not gonna tighten it all up until I get the bike dropped down and um, get my foot on there and see where I want this to go for my adjustments. Then we can pull this one off. I can set the length on this side in the back, and then I'll pull this bolt off, spin this guy back, and it'll pull my adjustment this way to wherever I want it to be. So I'm gonna leave that right there. Cool, all right, so that's on there. I'm gonna leave this nut or bolt loose here on the shifter because sometimes you have to take the shifter off and rotate it a tooth or two. So just to kind of help you get with your adjustments. So I'm gonna leave like that, but all in all, very, very happy with forward controls on this bike. So let me uh, switch everything around to the other side and then we'll get into getting that one on and then we'll uh, 
do a look afterwards and take it for a ride and see how it handles once we get the seat and stuff on. So cool, back in a minute. All right guys, so we got this switched around now to the other side. So pretty much the same kind of thing. We'll take off the foot peg. We'll take out these three screws here, here, here. And then we're gonna take this guy out and then that's gonna pull this whole assembly off. And then we're gonna undo these guys and take this lovely little clevis pin, which should be a lot better than it was on the Heritage and the Road Glide because it seems to be easier to get to here, but we'll, we'll see. I don't wanna jinx it. And then we'll put on the new bracket, which will go there and there. And then the pedal and all that stuff. And then finish up with reassembling the master cylinder and putting the peg on last. Um, one thing that I'm gonna do differently on this one is it calls out to pre-assemble your brake pedal. And I'm gonna do that this time. I didn't do it on the previous one because there is a bolt hole that is gonna be on the back side of this that is gonna be very hard to get to when this thing is in place. So I will probably pre-assemble that one. So, all right, let's get to it. First thing it says to do is take off your peg. So let's do that. Got my cool little tool. So right now you can see I have it on insert from the last time. I'm gonna go put it on remove from the, la the there for release. And I've rotated the E-clip around. And if you just kind of rock your pedal um, and hold it, it'll move that to where you can get it in the, the vicinity that you want. So I did that and we're just gonna take this little guy and remember this thing's gonna launch. So we're just gonna push on it. Pop it out. There it goes. Pop it off, caught it that time. So there's a little, little E-clip right there. So that's good. I'm gonna set him up over here on the side because we're gonna need him. Gonna push up this clevis pin, grab a hold of it, take that out, put that with it, and then gently pull out the spring. And I'm gonna leave it in there just like I did before so I have the orientation right, right, because I'm lazy. So I'm just gonna set that up here out of the way in the same direction that it goes sitting in there, all right? Just because, let's be smart about it. All right, so we got that out. Now we're going to loosen up these screws, uh, these two for the, the bracket and this guy here. I'm gonna start with this one, it's a little out of order, but because this has got a bolt hidden back here, that's a pain, we're gonna do this one first. Now this one, just like with the other side for the shift linkage, I'm gonna use my uh, 3 16th T-handle because this bracket's in the way and I can't get to get a good ratchet on it. So this is probably gonna be a tough little guy to get. So let's bust him loose. So we'll just back him out. And that releases the linkage from the bike. So that's good. So we'll pull that out, support it a little bit. So now that's loose, so your brake pedal, oops, your brake pedal's gonna be all kind of loose like that. So when we pull this whole assembly off, that's gonna come out, right? All right, so now we'll take our T45 and we'll start taking off this bracket. Right, so it's the whole linkage all pulled out. So you don't have to worry about trying to get to this little back guy back there. All right, so that's out. Set that over there out of the way. Keep these two screws handy. 
because I'll probably use those again. Don't know if I need that guy, so we'll set him right there. Now the next stage I want you to do is I want you to loosen up this guy and these two things and also take, take out this uh, cotter pin to release the master cylinder. So I think I'm gonna start with that one first. There we go, got her out. That was nicer than I thought it would be. And then we just go in here with a finger and pull this little pin out. Same one as in the other one, so I'll set those two together. That releases this arm on the master cylinder, right? So you can do that. So now because I have a bracket here, that's gonna go, this bracket, now that that's out. Those will go behind that, back up behind it, and these two will go here. All right, so now that's loose. So now we can go back in now and take out this bolt. Okay, so just to be nice, I'm gonna put one of the boxes that came in it right there, just like that to hold it. Okay, so now it tells us to Assemble this together with the brake pedal. T40 bit and half inch wrench. So just to give you an idea what I'm doing, I got my half inch wrench I'm holding with this hand, T40 bit here. And I'm gonna start tightening this guy down. So we've got that. I'm gonna start these screws. So the top one started, it'll hold it in place. And then we'll start the next one. All right, so that's got those. And then as you recall, those ones go here to hold the master cylinder. So I'm gonna start those. And then we're gonna take this guy back out now because this bracket goes here and here for the mount now. I've got this already snug down so it's not gonna go anywhere. I got this holding it. So when I pull this loose, it should give us what we need to be able to uh, hold it in place so nothing happens to it. All right, so I started that one. I used a longer screw because now with that other bracket on there and this being a part of it, it's too short, right?
So now you've got the shorter screw that came out of here. I put it back there just because I don't want a big old bolt hanging out the back there. Instructions don't say that, but that's what I did. A little customization. And then a longer bolt there to help with the bracket. So now the next thing will be is to put our clevis pin back in here for this spring to get that attached to the pedal, which is now in place. All right, so I got the pin kind of stuck in there. Now I'm gonna move my pedal around and this thing around until I get them to line up. Our pin, see it's just that little twisty thing, so you gotta push that guy out like this and get that started in there. Well, I knocked on wood, that was pretty easy. Way better than the other ones. All right, so now that's secure. Master cylinder's good, new brackets in, it's good to go. It's all moved over, brake levers in. It's working like it's supposed to. Now we're gonna put this little temporary foot peg back in. Boom, just like that. That's it. She's on, forward controls are on. So much better than being back here in the mids. All right, let me uh, clean up my mess. We'll drop the bike down and uh, do a before and after shot of this side showing you, you know, what it looks like forward controls versus mid controls and how it sits in the posture. And then we're gonna put the seat on and then do another shot of that just to see if that changes your seating triangle uh, for comfort on the bike because I know this seat sucks. So we get that switched over, it should see a nice little improvement with how you sit on the bike, right? And I think that'll be huge. All right, be back in a minute. Okay, so now that we got that done, now we're ready to put the Saddleman seat on. So here's the seat. In case you guys haven't seen one or done one before, when it comes in, it comes in with these two screws that hold this right here. You have to take those out and flip it around so that tongue goes back in order to mount it on the back of your fender. We'll do a short up of that. And then this piece right here tucks up underneath a bracket on your gas tank, right? So for right now, we're gonna switch around this little tab and that's a 530 seconds is what it uses. All right, cool. So that's in there. So now that's switched around. Also, it comes with the rubber washer that's tie wrapped to another section of the seat. And what that does is that is supposed to go between this and your fender to help protect it, right? Can't see right here, but I'll show you. It sticks on there. Now, another thing that I've used on my other bikes, which I was really happy with, is I bought this little thing on Amazon. I'll put the part description or part down in the description, but it's this little black plate. Now, the reason why I got it was because they didn't have the, uh, <clears throat> some of the seats had a silver tab, right? So this little guy sits right here, right on your seat tab, and there's sticky tape on the back of it for both sides. And then if you were to use the nut that comes with it, it goes right there and helps hold it in place. Because we're using the Robert Becker designs on there, I'm still gonna use this because I like the way that it looks and sits right down there nice and kind of extends out a little past the fender. Plus it, that rubber washer, when you set that on there, It goes on there like that and gives you a good gap, right? So we're gonna use that little guy to put that down on top of there. I think it looks cool. 
The other thing we have to do is because this bike came with the solo seat, we had to get these little fender nuts, right, that goes in there that I got. I got these from Drag Specialties, not from Harley. Um, I'll, I'll, again, I'll put the link in there from that. I got on Revzilla. And you just put those in there like that, it comes up, and I'll show you a trick to be able to do that and put it in there pretty easily. So let me switch the camera around and then we'll pull the other seat off and then I'll show you how to pull up that uh, fender bolt and then uh, we'll get started. Be back in a minute. All right, so I got the camera spun around a little bit, a little dusty in here, so sorry about that. But this is a stock seat it's held on by a Phillips head bolt. And you just take Phillips head screwdriver, put it in there. They put it on there pretty tight, so I already broke it loose, but I was afraid it was gonna strip out. So just be careful you don't strip the head of this guy out. Pull that out, it's got a little rubber washer on the back of it. Pull that little guy out. And then you just lift up your seat and pull it out, and there's the stock seat. She gone. All right. So before we can put the saddleman seat on, you can see here this little tab is where that goes up underneath the front there. And you've got these different plugs, which are cool. This one has a thread already in it, which is what we're gonna put in. And this one has a plug. Well, this is the plug that I need to pop out in order to put this nut plate in here so I can secure my seat down, right? So how do you get that out? Well. You reach down back behind here underneath the fender and you push up on it and it'll fly up if you don't hang on to it. And out comes that little plug. Just like that, comes right out. That's awesome. So now how do I get that nut plate up in there up underneath my fender? Cause that usually sucks. Yes, it does. So take a tie wrap, get your little nut plate put it through the tie wrap. One that's long enough, and it'll hold on the end down there, right? Go back underneath your fender, find that hole, shove that tie wrap up through it, pull that little guy up. There's a notch that it has to sit in, right? Because that's what sits in there. And you take your little E-reclaining, a little E-clip type plastic thing and snap that guy on there and then drop out your tie wrap. And voila, you have a mount point. So pretty simple, pretty cool. Uh, easy way to do things so you don't have to get in there in the middle of everything. And then just because it's so dusty in here, I'm gonna Clean off my back fender. I'm gonna hang on to that clip or that uh, cover because I can probably use it on one of my other bikes uh, to be able to cover that up a little bit. But since I got this all off and it's all ready to go, we're gonna clean this up before we put the seat on. Just like that. All smexy. All right, so now that we got that, we go over and grab our new saddleman seat. And again, like I said, you've got this tab right here that goes underneath this piece. And then this piece goes on that, right? So new seat, sometimes it finagles, sometimes it doesn't. You just want to kind of rock it in place where it gets up in there like that. And then that just pushes down and it'll settle once it gets going, but just kind of push it in there like that. Now you take the little saddle and washer that came with it and you put that right over that nut plate right there. So this guy will sit down on it and it protects your fender, right? And then the little thing that I showed you, which is really cool. 
I just like the way it looks. There's this little top piece here. It's kind of beveled on the end, right? That slides right over there. And you just push it up against the seat. Get your Robert Becker Designs bolt in there. Now the neat thing about the Robert Becker Designs is it's all blacked out in the front. That little pin in there, that little pin acts as a notch to get this so it's your wrench. Then you get a key to put in there to do that. So you just put this guy on there so it locks in there and then start screwing this down. Plenty strong enough to hold on to it. Give it a good tighten. That's not going nowhere and I put a little Loctite on it. And you take your key, put it inside the lock. And when you turn it, that little pin goes away. See, now it slides over. Now you got the pin stuck out. So then you stick that back on, push it all the way down, make sure it goes all the way down, push your pin back in, and now this just spins around, can't come off, no one can get to it, they can't pry it off, they can't do anything, and your nice new expensive saddleman seat is now secured. I like the step up seats. I have these on my other bikes too, or a version of it. I don't do wheelies or anything like that, like a lot of people use these for, but I like it because the seat goes up over the tank and protects you from your vest or your jacket buttons and all that. Plus it's a nice, nice sitting seat. So, and that's about it. Now we'll switch the camera around and uh, do a look to see how the seat and the forward controls change, change my seating posture. Now, after that's the case, I'll be ready to determine for my bars, right? And to see how I want my bars to seat because now I have my seat and my controls are where I want them. So, cool, back in a second. All right, well, there you have it. We got new seat on, Robert Becker designs seat lock. We've got the forward controls put on, and boy, I can't wait now uh, to be able to ride this thing and uh, see how much better it feels, because it was really uncomfortable to ride it with my knees up so high like that and so far forward. Um, as you can see from the pictures that I'm including here right now, you can see the difference of before and after for where my feet sat and my legs and the bend, and then where they are after the forward controls. And I also included one where you can see where I think my hands would sit more comfortably with a bar chains and some risers. So from the looks of it, I got to go up about four inches and about two inches back. And that should give me a great riding position, nice and vertical in my back. And yes, I have a solution in route. So stay tuned for that one. And uh, that'll be one of the next ones we come up doing will be some of these other things. I've got a few other little small things I'll do on it that I'll show you guys. But real excited to get this thing going and get it customized to suit me and look forward to cranking some miles out on it. So let's get this thing off the rack, get my pedals adjusted, and then I'll go for a ride and we'll come back to that and I'll show you what it's like riding it and do a POV from behind the bars and how it sits and feels. One thing I do want to call out is that air cleaner down there. You can also see now with the forward controls how my shin rests right up against the front of it. So that's gonna go, and that'll cut off about six inches or so of that bulk, which then makes that brake pedal more usable. So I do notice that it's kinda under that air cleaner, but that's because of the scoop. If I put my standard Vance and Hines air cleaner on there that I got, then that'll be nice and it'll be perfect. So yet another one that's coming. So, all right, let me uh, get this thing all adjusted and then we'll get the helmet on and go out and take it for a ride and I'll show you what it's like going down the road. Cool, see you in a minute. One last thing, check out my cool sexy shirt, Moto Blonde. Very cool, wrench dirty, ride clean. 
She's kind of the reason why I have this thing because I saw her video on it when she did it. So if you haven't seen her stuff, go check out her channel. Very cool lady. Uh, her and Anthony are just really funny. They do some great videos. She does a lot of wrenching on bikes. They got some things they're working on. So well worth going and checking that out. So Moto Blonde. All right, see you in a few minutes. So here we are back up on the Lowrider ST for the first time. Other than just a few little cruises around the block, got roughly 17 miles on it. And let me tell you what, boy, that seat and those forward controls, man, what a difference do they make. I mean, here you can see where my feet are now on both sides. You can see my shin hits this scoop. So that's why that's going, but man, forward controls make such a difference. Oh my goodness, just totally different in how it feels to ride, the handling and the agility, at least for me, uh, having those mid controls were just way, way too uh, high and cramped. I just felt like I was just slammed up on the tank and everything else. If I get some bars and risers and get those extended up, I think. I mean, these ones aren't bad. I could probably put these on there with the risers, but uh, I'm gonna change out and go with the actual bars too as well, get a little bit better bend in them. And I think that'll really make a difference for a lot of that. But oh, so much more comfortable of a ride. It just feels awesome. Let me shut that in case my wind is getting too much for you. But yeah, just huge difference. So for those that are probably taller, from what I understand, guys or girls that are around 5'7", 5 5'8", 5 5 5 they seem to think these are great. They like the higher mid-bend or mid-mounted uh, mid pegs and uh, mid controls and all that. But and I'm thinking if you're like 5'10", 11, because I'm 5'11 in a little bit, that that's just going to drive you absolutely nuts and like get your hip, hips all cramped up and everything else, because that's what it was doing to me. But let me tell you what, this little guy is an agile little sucker. Uh, very impressed with the handling and the way it, it goes down the road. I think once I get the mini boards on the front, I think it'll be a lot better. But I can hit my brake pedal just fine. Um, it is a little bit under because of that scoop, but that too shall be remedied soon. But yeah, just a huge difference. I can't even begin to tell you. It's actually enjoyable to ride now, where before it was just frustrating. So anyway, just wanted to kind of close that out and give it a, a ride and let you kind of see what it's like from that with those new adjustments on it. So uh, make sure you like and subscribe and leave any comments that you have. I hope you guys liked the video. I hope it was useful and you learned something or gave you some ideas of what you can do on one of your bikes or maybe you have a lowrider ST that you want to do something to as well. So. All right, have a good one. I'll close this out here and uh, enjoy the rest of my ride. So see you guys on the next one.